like to welcome, I'm sure Andrew will as well, all those of you who travelled to be with us today um, from as far away as Poland and Sunderland and Darlington and various other parts of, of Britain. Second World War. 
And he also knows what it's like to be made welcome in a new country by people who took him into their own home, enabling him to start a new life. Sixty years ago, at the age of 28, having already experienced the life of poverty at home, especially after the death of his mother and father, after forced labour and imprisonment under the Nazi regime, after life in the Polish and British armies, as I say, at the age of 28, John was able to rekindle his childhood dream of becoming a priest. He had very little by way of formal education, but he was highly qualified in the University of Life Experience. And so it was after two years at a seminary for late vocations. And then John joined the Redemptorists for his novitiate year in Perth in Scotland. And seven years as a student for the priesthood in our seminary at Hawkston in Shropshire. After all these years, John was ordained a priest on the 1st of July, 1966, 50 years ago this weekend. John's story is unique and unusual in that he was able to fulfill his dream to become a priest. But the story of displacement, of emigration and immigration, unfortunately, is still all too common today, as it has been. Many of us will come from families where our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents have had to leave their homes and their countries in search of a better life. The fact of movement of peoples is a fact of life that's built into our human condition. The story of the Bible is the story of a migrant people in search of a promised land. In the end, it is the story of salvation, the story of God who leads us out of slavery, out of exile, into an everlasting kingdom of love, free from fear, free from oppression, a kingdom of peace and justice where every human life is valued and respected. The message of the Bible is good news to those who are aware of the fragile nature of their life. We are overwhelmed by a world that's consumed by selfishness and greed. Humanity is divided, north from south, east from west, rich from poor, the haves from the have-nots. We're divided into ethnic groups, national and tribal groups, religious groups, believers and non-believers. 
And while there are many who will exploit these divisions for their own benefit, the message of Jesus Christ is one of forgiveness and reconciliation, that God's love overcomes and heals all that divides us, to make us one family, where every single human being is important, where the common good of all must be the motivation of our efforts to bring about the Kingdom of God, which is our common destiny. This is the truth that Jesus came to share. It's the truth for which he died. And it's the truth which, through the Church, our risen and victorious Lord proclaims to each one of us that there is freedom and hope, a new life for all. And it's this truth to which Father John has committed his life and ministry for the last 50 years. As we thank him and congratulate him on his fidelity and perseverance, we ask God to help us all to learn the lessons of history so that each one of us in our own little way can contribute to building the world that God wants. We pray every day, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we can't expect God to do it on His own. He needs each and every one of us, like Father John, to commit ourselves wholeheartedly, faithfully to the truth of the Gospel that Jesus came to bring. <laughs>